Hi, today I'm going to show you how to access the HBP Group Self Service Portal or SSP. This will show you how to log in and gain access to this and then we'll show you the features and benefits of using this portal. Initially, we need to open a web browser and go to the following URL hbp.support. We'll then be presented with a login page. If you currently don't have access to the SSP, please speak to one of the help desk team. They will be able to send you out an enrollment email. Initially, we need to log in with our email address. Password we have set as part of the enrollment process. And it will log us in. You're presented with this screen. Um, I'll now walk you through this screen and explain each section and the benefits of doing so. So presented with a search bar here. So this is going to search our knowledge base. We have hundreds of knowledge base articles based around issues we've seen before. Um, so it's a really good place to start if you're looking for a solution to a problem. So I could simply type in here Office 365 and it will present articles on issues with 365. The first one here is um, how to update Microsoft Office. So it's a really good place to start and to look to see if there is a knowledge base article for the issue you are um, seeing. There is um, also another way you can search the knowledge base, which we'll look at shortly. I'm just going to press back at this stage. I'm going to start in the top left hand corner. So something is broken. So this is used for you to log an incident. If there's a problem uh, with your PC, with your server, um, simply click this button. Do house stress if it's an urgent issue. We would always recommend calling us on 01724 400 304 and you'll get straight through to one of our support technicians. So if I click that something's broken, you will automatically be present presented with your name and your company name. Um, this obviously is set by uh, who you log in as and it will automatically fill in the IT incident as the ticket type. So this is correct. You don't need to adjust this. Um, those two can remain in place. Um, the first box where we have to ask for some information is the summary of the issue. Please try and give us a brief but um, accurate summary of what the problem is. This will allow the technicians to efficiently um, review the issue and enable us to respond in the quickest amount of time. So I'm going to say um, Office 365 error. And what you can see it's doing here is it's searching our knowledge base and displaying anything to do with Office 365. So I can see that Office 365 article earlier. Um, keep updates with changes and features. But in this case, I'm getting an error. One, two, three, four. Um, and as I can see, there's a couple of incidents there that may or may not be useful um, that have an error. One, two, three, four in. I could simply click that and it would take me to that article. In this case, I'm going to carry on. So I'm just going to click the cross and I fill in my details. So put a bit of context around that. We can format this if necessary. Uh, we can insert images if you want to insert an image screenshot. That's always nice. It'll allow our technicians to um, see exactly what the error is. We can then scroll down and look at the impact and urgency side of things. Now, this is really important. This will allow us again to categorize the ticket and respond accordingly. So we've got three options on the impact. So how is it impacting the business? Is it a single user? Myself. Um, in this case, is the the only person that's been affected. Um, is it multiple people that are being affected, or is it an entire company? So in this case, it's a single user. So I'll pick single user, and then under the urgency, we can then select how inconvenient or how um, how big a problem this is. So at this stage, I'm going to pick medium. Work uh, functions are embedded. I can't get into Word, so it is a it is a potential uh, issue that I can't carry on with. Um, again, I can drop some attachments in there as well if I need to. Then I simply all I need to do is click, click submit. 
and it will then log the ticket. When it's logged the ticket, it will give me the summary. I can go in here and add some notes. Um, I can see the status of the ticket in here as well. So obviously new, um, and as that ticket progresses through to in progress, um, I will see that status change. Um, I will see any notes that are in here regarding the ticket that's open um, with the tech or any notes I want to add as well. It will also email me. So it will send me an email for, for that ticket. Um, so I've always got traceability of that. And on that email, I can click and it will take me straight back into the ticket. So now I've got that ticket logged. If I go back to the main portal and I then just go below to my tickets, what it will allow me to do is see all my open tickets. So here gives me the ticket ID, um, the user and location, the summary and the incident. I can simply go back in to the ticket here. It takes me back to the same place as we were seeing but I can see any updated notes from the technician and I can add notes myself. So what I could do say, um, and I can click save, I can drag and drop any files on and we can see the updates from that. You will obviously see the technicians that have dealt with that ticket um, and as they have added notes to it, it will allow you to see from there. So what we can see now is um, the support technician um tony pearson i am both sides of the uh, coin here so i'm the customer and um the support tech um i can see the update from the support technician there that we're investigating it it looks like a patch um and um it's been rectified and obviously now it's moved in progress if i had multiple tickets open i would see them in here um i can also if i've got rights um change it from my tickets to all tickets so if i go to all tickets here i can see other tickets for other people within my organization this is again based on the rights of the person so i have um, rights to see all tickets for the all business i can also filter by um status as well so i've got it open tickets at the moment if i clicked all tickets i could see a list of all tickets uh, in here that we have so We've focused there on an incident, so something's broken. Um, we've also focused on how we can um, track tickets. We'll now go on to uh, a change request or need something new. So this could be a new device. Um, it could be a new starter. It could be a lever. Um, if I click that and then go to IT service request, I'm presented with a few options here. Now, this is not an extensive list of everything that's available. We are adding to this regularly um, and we'll continue to add to this. So we have a new starter. Um, so probably the one of the most common ones we deal with, and I'll just walk you through um, this. Um, all the other four requests in here are pretty much the same. They just ask for different information dependent on what um, what the type of the service request is. But if we go to a new starter again, it puts me as the main contact. Um, the summary is automatically filled in and so are the details. Um, what you'll then be presented with is um, some questions. It's important that these are filled in correctly um, with correct information because this will allow us to swiftly uh, create this new user. And the ones with stars on, as you would expect, are mandatory. So we, obviously we need to know the start date, first name, last name, the email address format you want um, and various other uh, elements um, that we need. It's really useful if we are replacing an existing user, we know who that is um because that'll help um setting up the user and copy user settings is really important as well as um that'll allow us to make sure we get the right permissions we can select on here if um, the user needs a new device so does this user have a device already or do they need a new device um, and such things as locations domains um, job titles etc so please try and give us as much information as possible. This will make the whole process much, much slicker and allow us to action it in a much timely manner. So if I just go back, I'm not going to submit that ticket. That was the new starter process. We have the opposite of that, which is a leave request, which is the same process. It just asks some slightly different questions. Um, we also have a new device request. So if you needed a new machine for any reason, again, ask some very basic questions, but it'll allow us to come back to you with a, uh, a proposal for a new machine. And then if there's anything else at this stage, you can pick not listed, and that is going to generate a generic service request. This could be such things as change to distribution groups, um, as permissions to folders and things like that. So please use that for that section. And if you happen to come into the wrong section and need to log an incident, then you can click that and that will take you back to the same section as before. 
OK, um, so some other options here. We can search the help article. So this does exactly the same as the search bar up here. It's just another way to access it. Um, we can allow access to your device. So if you need us to connect to your device via team viewer um, because there's a particular issue, you can click allow access to the device. Select the department. That you are dealing with and they will talk you through the rest of the options. Please don't click this without um, requests from ourselves because we won't know that that's waiting for us to connect into. Um, and then if you need our rest of our support details, so phone numbers, email addresses, if you click the support details option, it will take you to our support page and it will um, give you the ability to find any of our um, support details that you may need. So for argument's sake, KC support gives you the primary email addresses, primary phone numbers and allows you to quickly make contact with us from there as well. Um, there are a couple of extra buttons at the top. Um, these just replicate what we've got down the bottom. So something's broken, something new, my tickets. Um, there is also one additional button on here, remote monitoring dashboard. So this will um, take you through to the Solowins um, dashboard. And for those who have access, will allow you to log into your remote monitoring dashboard uh, and view such things as assets um, and run reports off, etc. Again, if you don't have access to that and you need access, please contact a member of our support team and they'll be able to do so. So I think that concludes running through the portal today. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us.